Assalamu alaikum. I would like to thank Professor uh, Dr. Kaya for inviting me to the symposium. Um, I am not a professor of archaeology or a doctor, but uh, just a layperson who has expressed an interest in those arcs since my uh, childhood. And in fact, my uh, first time in this part of Turkey or in the country of Turkey was in June 1997. And since that time, I have fell in love with the country and the culture and the history of this region. Um, and now I'm a resident of Ari province. Um, now, a lot of the attention uh, for this search of uh, the elusive arc has been focused on the stratovolcano, uh, we call in English, Eret. Um, the uh, very first attempt, uh, su successful to attempt to climb the mountain was done in October 1829 by the German naturalist, Frederick Perrat. And um, after the uh, per Russo-Persian War though, uh, the mountain became accessible to Western researchers and explorers. Uh, and since that time, over a dozen uh, so-called eyewitnesses have claimed to have seen uh, the, the Ark of Noah on different parts of this volcano and in different states of decay. Uh, some of the most uh, famous accounts have said they have seen uh, uh, an intact rectangular barge sitting up there in the glacier or in the canyon on the north side of the mountain. Now, because Ararat was a remote mountain that seemed uh, so inaccessible to most researchers, uh, many people focused on the eyewitness accounts of those who actually made the journey. And a lot of stock was put into these accounts. Now, the last 20 years though, uh, suddenly the mysterious Mount Ararat was open to a new way to search for Noah's Ark. Um, researchers were not dependent upon a few who can climb the mountain or those who said they saw the ark on different places on the mountain. Uh, with Google Earth, Esri, Mapbox, and NASA satellite imagery, all this mountain became available to the public to search on their own. Um, in fact, here's a 2001 uh, NASA uh, International Space Station photograph, and here's a, a satellite imagery of uh, Mount Ararat. Uh, not just satellite imagery, but also uh, infrared imagery has been produced for this region. And uh, in fact, uh, we now have th very accurate 3D models available on the internet where you can uh, act like you're climbing the mountain and searching for Noah's Ark on your own. Uh, you can zoom in and pan around in these new technologies. Now this has enabled um, many people, lay people to produce videos on the internet and on YouTube and uh, to promote what they think they see on the mountain. So you have people claiming different shadows and different geological features are the elusive arc. And so uh, some of these videos have gotten thousands of views uh, where people have claimed that this uh, feature or that feature on Mount Ararat is the arc based on Google Earth imagery. Now, uh, obviously, uh, it, this has also generated the interest of the media, and you have different news stories and films produced about this search for Noah's Ark uh, on Mount Ararat. Now, the search for the Ark has not only been focused um, on the mountain itself, but also in the region. And the most famous is the Durupanar site, uh, where they used aerial photographs to actually first identify the site in September of 1959. Uh, Captain Ilhan Durupanar with the Turkish military uh, discovered this site while uh, looking at the aerial photographs for mapping of the region. Um, and then later on in 1961, uh, the Turkish uh, photographer Ara Güler uh, did some famous low aerial uh, flights over this boat shaped formation. And the results of these aerial photographs when they hit the press it generated interest, especially in the West. Now, because the Turkish government has not granted um, excavation access to any group, uh, these interested parties uh, focused on technology to determine what was below the soil. 
Now, one of the first things that they used on this site was a 1985 uh, pulse induction metal detectors to see if there was any metal patterns in, inside this boat formation. Um, uh, other uh, technology that they used was geophysical survey techniques like uh, ground penetrating radar. Some of the first use of the radar in this region was done on the Durupanar site, and it allowed some of these lay people to produce uh, uh, graphics and images of what they think they saw below the surface of some of the patterns of reflections in the GPR results. Um, here's, for example, a GPR scan done in June 1986 that they showed that had a pattern of reflections below the surface at the top end of the formation. Uh, later in 1987, uh, Turkish scientists and American scientists from two different universities teamed up and did a complete survey of the site using not only GPR, but a magnetometer. And the, uh, one of the most noteworthy discoveries on that was a planar feature that was below the whole site, uh, just below the ground. Now, since that time, there have been other uh, private efforts to determine what was below the ground using technology. Uh, the most recent attempt that it hit the news was uh, the uh, 2014 ERT survey by Mr. John Larson from New Zealand, who uh, is a remote uh, uh, sensor uh, specialist. Um, and he uh, was able to produce some uh, interesting results from his survey, which he put out on his website. Uh, and on his website, one can see some of the interpretation of what he thinks uh, the survey has showed below the ground. One of the most interesting is this hull shaped object that was right below the boat formation that you see on the surface. Uh, this of course generated a lot of news in the last couple of years um, with uh, lay people uh, claiming that this would be the hull of the boat of Noah. Now in 2019, uh, one of the most recent uh, geophysical surveys done on the Darupanar site was done when the Discovery's Science Channel came out to film a TV episode. An American team of geophysical specialists scanned the boat with LIDAR, thermal cameras, and two types of GPR, um, two, uh, 250 uh, megahertz antenna and a 100 megahertz. Now the 100 megahertz uh, produced some interesting results that an American archaeologist, uh, Dr. Bigman, um, who specializes in GPR, uh, said this would be a spot of interest if future excavations were done because of the angular features seen about seven meters below the ground. Um, and not only uh, did this uh, uh, survey uh, produce uh, angular results, they were also parallel lines that were showing eight to nine feet below the surface at different spots on the boat formation. Now, even with these new geophysical survey results and technology, most geologists and archaeologists uh, consider the Durupanar site a geological formation that can be explained by natural processes of nature and not a man-made object. Um, so where does this leave us with uh, the use of technology to uh, study and search for Noah's Ark? Um, I believe in the future, uh, more use will, uh, will be of 3D seismic, for example, and drones, uh, which will allow uh, researchers to cover a larger area. Um, and then some uh, archeologists claim that we won't even have to dig in the future, but they can just use tiny robots to explore a site. And uh, in fact, one of the uh, most famous uh, space archeologists of our time, Professor Dr. Sarah Parkak, uh, said that in 20 or 30 years, she could imagine where archeologists may not uh, may stop excavating entirely. And um, of course, she is focused on remote sensing using satellite imagery. Um, and I believe that the future is uh, bright uh, for using these newer technologies to survey the uh, area of Urartu uh, to determine where the Ark of Noah is. Mm -hmm.